Hello, asking her to see here. I know what you're thinking. This is what I look like? It is. Here's a picture of me when I was at birth. But anywho, we're just going to get on with the video here, and that way I can have more conversation with you guys. So I hope you like it. So this video here is a video that they made when they did the become a sailor or making a sailor or whatever. And then they interviewed the actual RDCs that were in there as well. So it's more like from the RDC perspective. So what they're going to be doing here is we're just going to go over the video. And I'm going to give my thoughts and see if maybe if they were holding back anything or like that. Um, or they maybe cut some things that they were feeling. And then they're like, oh, that doesn't look good or something. So I'm going to give my personal opinion about it and see how, uh, according to how they respond. So here we go. I can't see a thing. Get up! Hey, hey, hey right you right there, question! Are you guys last discipline today? Go, 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 go. Hey, this job is it's very demanding. We train more than 35,000 recruits a year. You work an 18-hour day, and then you're back in the next day, 0400. You're not looking, man, look! We put stress on them here, yelling up in here 24-7. They'll understand that when they get to the fleet and something goes bad, they'll be able to handle all that pressure and all that stress. Now! First cup of the day. Yep, it's time. <laughs> I tell my recruits, you don't quit on us, we won't quit on you. You gotta come in and give us 100% of your Get louder! Get louder! It is 3.40 in the morning, uh, going to work, able to wake the recruits up at 5 and get the day started. 3.40 in the morning. She lived far away then. I lived over in the base housing, which was like right next to the base itself. A lot of people did. Not everyone did, obviously. Of course, you can see she doesn't. Um, but, oh man, wake up 3.40 in the morning just to rub them at 5. I would wake up at 4.30 and get there just fine. But, you know, that's me. Okay, your whole family ain't waking up at 3.40 in the morning. Now They're about to show her whole, but, you know, they're doing it for the camera, which is cool. I'm Chief Davala. I am a recruit division commander here at RTC Great Lakes. I feel that recruits have this idea that just one day we woke up and we became RDCs as if we never had to go through a process um, as if we never went through any of the hard times to get to where we're at. I don't know if I would say that. There's definitely, like, they think that's our only job. Sure, that's our shore duty rotation. But, yeah, I mean, we went through boot camp. We went. We were, you know, junior enlisted that really didn't understand the left foot from the right foot, you know. And, you know, we probably acted just as silly as, you know, the recruits did or if you're about to join, uh, how you're going to act. It's, it's, it's fine. We came from there, the same place you came from, which is probably why we take so much pride in it. Word of advice, when you do get orders here, please get a jacket for Illinois. Don't bring one of your jackets from back home. Weather up here is technically cold all year round, so they can say it's going to be... I would argue that one. I would argue that one. So, yes, it gets amazingly cold when you're there, uh, especially during the winter time. There was at one point, uh, I think it was like 2018 or 19, where they had like a record of like negative 40 degrees with the wind chill, and I was there for that. It was, oh, it was cold. For So, for sure, yeah, you got to have the right gear. But... As far as bringing your own personal gear, that's for your own time. You know, that's not you're not going to be wearing that while you're in RDC. You're going to be wearing, you know, the military gear they give you while you're in RDC. You know, being in the military, whether you're wearing a ring coat with a liner or the parka with a liner or the Eisenhower, which is what you saw Chief wearing earlier with a liner. And, you know, maybe one or two wear something underneath as well. Uh, but, yeah, it could get extremely cold. But in the summer, it gets hot and humid. Partly clouds today. Out of nowhere, it just starts snowing or something like that. My name is Pedro Sabarti. I'm a recruit division commander here at Recruit Training Command. I went through boot camp February 23rd, 2011. Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't march. Um, I could, I was good at PT, but uh, my RDCs, um, 
they would always yell at me a lot for not being able to march. Um, we're here now. It is. So he had to wake up at 2.30. That's so early. Well, he lives in Joaquin, so he lives a little far away. But, you know, you got to get to work on time. And it's funny that he stated, too, that, you know, he wasn't really good at marching. He got yelled at a lot. And here he is. He's an RDC. And actually, he used to work at... Um, uh, he used to work at a, uh, at a C-School instructor. So he was training RDCs that were blue ropes, you know, and becoming uh, an RDC themselves. So it's everyone always says, oh, it's always the RPOCs of the divisions that grow up to be RDCs. Man, I was the window cleaner. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, you know, it's more so you willing to do the job. 325. Well, and I knew when I was a recruited boot camp, I wanted to be a RDC. Good morning, Petty Officer. Senior Recruit White, Division 231. Roman. Security Watch, standing by further instruction, Petty Officer. Who's the Chief of Naval Operations? Petty Officer, Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Richardson, Petty Officer. Who? Waking up early in the morning, it's the first thing that's on my mind. Did my starboard watch make those correct deck log entries before I walked in the compartment? You, get over here. I'm talking to you, starboard watch. Yes, Officer. Go behind her. Read this. Read it. And try it again. I have Officer. Good afternoon, Petty Officer. Senior Recruit Thomas, Division 231. Security Watch. Waiting further instructions. Petty Officer! Look, does anything here say waiting further instructions? No, Petty Officer. You're not looking, man. Look! I have Officer. Try it. Read it and look. I have Petty Officer. Good afternoon, Petty Officer. Senior Recruit Thomas, Division 231. Security Watch. Same by further instructions, Petty Officer. Who is the Chief of Naval Operations? That's, you know, everyday kind of thing. Always just, you got to be uh, testing your recruits every time you go. So, yeah, it, you, if you're going to stand that watch, get ready to ask questions. You walk around, get ready to ask questions. And, you know, good RTC is going to be always drilling your recruits. That's 4.47. I'm on the way in to rev the division. We wake up at 0.530 today. See, so that's a more normal time. Person, so it's... It's difficult sometimes to wake up and get out, get yourself out of bed. Oh yeah, I was always Chief like, Justin you can kind of work out a schedule later on, and I or try to tell my partners, hey, <laughs> you know, I'll come in at twelve and relieve you and tap them if you wrap them, because I just, you know, I hate waking up early in the morning. No one really does, I guess, but there were some people, I, where you know, my partners were like, oh yeah, definitely, I'll, I'll, I'll rev them if you come relieve me at that time, because you know, at that point they're only having like a six, seven hour work day and I'd stay from 1200 to depth. So 22 or 20, you know, so I'd have an eight or eight or 10 hour work day. We have a good turnover, for, not every day, but you know, you work it out. Else, a recruit division commander here at Recruit Training Command. Is that what it says, recruit? Put your hand back up. Aye, right, Chief. Read it. Broken, uh, security boss, sending my further instruction, Chief. Start over from the top, recruit. Aye, right, Chief. It was kind of surreal being in charge of 88 recruits. You don't know the feeling until you're, you're in front of 88 recruits and you're leading them to a goal. Uh, staying energetic throughout the whole day uh, takes mind power um, you have to you have to keep telling yourself that you're doing it to motivate Hold. recruits and you're motivating Get other people um, sometimes you pull that motivation from the recruits sometimes you have to uh, find it within the the partners that you're pushing with and some 100 percent agree with them also i just want to say i know this chief and i know that dude um that first class right there i don't know i think i've seen her before but known them both um but yeah this video is from 2019, so it was made while I was there. But no, I'm not in this video. Um, and even if I was, I wouldn't point myself out. But anyway, um, yeah, it's true what he said. There's, I mean, you're there sometimes 16, 18 hour days, because not every day is like that. The beginning, there's a very long days. You got your P days, and you're just trying to get them everywhere they need to go, and it's all hands on deck. So you and your partners are there, and you know, just you're trying to get the basics of training down, how to march, and everything like that. There's just a lot going on too, so you can't do it by yourself, and you need 
many people there as possible and you just got to be on your feet the whole entire time so I, there's times where if you you know as an rdc you can't just sit there and just like slouch and just like start getting lazy and stuff because the recruits will see that and then they'll feed off of that so if you give out energy all the time just you know like you want to be there like you care and then you know the recruits will start acting like that and then they'll give off energy and then it goes back and forth again so it's great yeah but yeah it gets, it's mind power for sure sometimes you're just wow you know i loved being an rdc uh minus covid but there are some times where it was difficult sometimes you just gotta find that inner drive also a lot of energy drinks assigned to each division there are three rdcs Typically one is going to be a chief or a lead, which could be also a first class petty officer. And then you will have two partners, which would be a second class or another first class. Yeah, usually they want a chief as like um, with them, but yeah, it could be a first class. I mean, there was one point actually they had like three second classes do it. They were overwatched by their brother, Dave, who was a chief. But it was one of those like to prove a point kind of things. And they were all actually like really stellar second classes. Um, so that was probably like the one group that would make it work. But yeah, I know I'm, I was a lead while I was a first class there for like four of the pushes. So yeah, but it is good to have a chief. Like I remember just, oh, it's good to lean on a chief if you don't have one. You have 60 seconds to go on the call. Get on the line. Get on the line. Get on the A little bit of the coffee. worst coffee. Uh, a little bit of motivation from recruits and uh, motivation from your petty officers that you're pushing with or whoever your partners are you're pushing with to, to help you get through the day. Uh, sometimes the recruits will just do something that uh, you wouldn't expect them to do, especially this early in training, and they give you motivation to help, help train them. Yeah, um, having good or bad partners could really make or break a push it's it's wild if you guys don't vibe i'm not saying you have to like best friends or anything like that but if you guys if you don't vibe with your partners on push you uh, like as rdc's it's the worst i had one push i just did not vibe with my partners and we they didn't vibe with me either now it was it was both ways it was just i don't know what it was we just couldn't click we uh we even mentioned like we're not vibing and we try to like figure it out but we just we weren't like at each other's throats or anything like that but it was just like we are not doing well as a team and we even told them at the end, like, never team us up again. We don't hate each other or anything like that. But, wow, we just didn't work. And it was the longest push ever. Like, it just it just felt horrible. I was, like, and our, it was my worst scoring one, too. And we're, So we were all pretty upset about that. We just could not get on the same page for some reason. And then I had one. We were vibing so good. We were just, like, finishing each other's sentences. And on top of that, we scored really well. The recruits even fed off from that. They they had a great time. And that was the thing, too. When it was the bad one, the recruits fed off of that. And it was they were not happy. Um I met one recruit from that push before, and I was like, oh, wow, I'm sorry. We were, I feel like I let you all down. And then, then they actually came to me and said, no, actually, we could tell you guys weren't getting along, but you were making it work. And we, a lot of them took that to heart, which was cool, but at the same time, they, they noticed it too, you know, you're messing up. So you definitely need good partners. They help motivate you, and they also, like, make or break your push. And sometimes it could just be fun being at work, you know, outside of that. And then on top of being an RDC. We work... On average, probably 14 to 16 hours a day the first couple of weeks. Uh, just The first couple of weeks, like he said. It's, it, like I said before, too, you know, that's where you make all your money. Uh, you know, training and everything like that. You're hard at the beginning, and then you can kind of, like, get a nice rotation. So you can get, you don't have to work 16-hour days. You can go to 14 and then 12 and then 10, and you have a good rotation. And then some, there's some days you just have to be there all day. Um, but, you know, it's whatever trying to get the recruits in that mindset that they're they're at boot camp and uh, training them everything that they need to be trained on to, to make them successful while they're here at boot camp. And then after that, you can relax the hours a little bit, but uh, you still got to keep that drive along. Come on, you have to march! Recruit, march, pick your feet up. You're not special. So some of the biggest challenges that we face, uh, I would say would be recruits coming here with the mindset that they, they know everything and they, they don't want to listen to what we're trying to teach them. You have to train. So I actually was luckily never really had that problem. Uh, I've heard of other RDCs having that problem. They came like, I already know how this all works. And you don't. 
You really don't. Even if someone told you, you still not, it's still you experience it. It's not the same. And things change all the time. You know, that's why I'm kind of careful about like what I put out. I'm going to say why I was there. So things change. Boot camp's always evolving. They're always trying to like change either the evolutions or even being as hard to see what requirements are, which is why I always say, look at these instructions, you know, my Navy HR and everything like that will have a lot of the instructions. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that would be terrible if they just came to me and they're like, I already know how to do this. Oh, I'm sorry. My decades of uh you know experience in here with me and my partners but you've been in the navy for two weeks and you're gonna tell me how this works oh that would be so infuriating just be humble just, if it was you're an rdc or if you recruit just be humble now it'll be into fine thinking the same way so they're all on the same page and they're all working as a team all right so did you guys look at your racks yes chief they're all jacked up right yes chief why is that they were set up right chief they're not set up right nobody wants to own up to anything they do right when was the last time you did an ITE session? Come to the ready! Always ready! Some of the problems we have at first when we're training, I would say is just they don't listen. They don't pay attention to the, the amount of detail that you want them to pay attention to. Attention to detail is big here um, because when they get to the fleet, depending on what their job is or what they're going to do for the Navy, if we don't teach that here, they have the potential to, to injure each other or themselves or somebody else or even get somebody else killed. So I agree with the ending semi, right? It's about learning attention to detail. Uh, it's the little things. Folding your shirt might not matter, but if I can't trust you to fold a shirt, then I'm not going to trust you to go out and, you know, operate equipment and stuff like that. So, yeah, I agree with that. But the beginning part, like, I would say I've never personally had a problem with they weren't listening. I would say you just they would hear you, but they didn't understand the importance of following instructions, like I, you know, just said. That's how I'd, I'd run into that problem sometimes. But, you know, I mean, everyone's push is different. Um, and I know that chief, so I'm, I'm, he's, uh, he's soft-spoken until you get something wrong, and then you find out he can get pretty loud. So uh, I have a lot of faith in his ability. Plus that petty officer he's with, like I guess I don't know who the female was. I've seen her around, uh, but I just saying I personally know that dude, and he was fun to push with as well. Uh, he was in my brother, Dave, I believe. But, no, we got along really well too, so that must have been a fun push. Plus 900s. 900s are always fun. Doing something else, right? Yes, Chief! But you guys don't want to do that. You want to be on your own program. You don't want to listen. What we just did ITE for was because they can't pay attention to detail. Uh, everything has a place and a way of folding it. So now we're going to go through step by step, fold everything in the lock department again, and get the lock department set up. Here's open mouth shut. Hey, everybody gather around. Come behind the clearing barrel with your training guy. Let's go. Hey, turn up the motivation. Eyes on the weapon. Alright, ready up, sir. So these are old eight millimeter um, pistols that they have there, and um, they're very, very, very similar to the M9s that we carry. Um, they've like removed the firing pin. They even like filled the barrels with like some putty or something like that. You can't fire a bullet through this. You're not going to be able to fire this weapon without a serious amount of machinery. Uh, and they even give you dummy rounds. They don't even give you real bullets or anything like that. So this is all just, you know, it's a safe environment and it's simulated to be real so that you can learn to properly arm and de-arm, uh, the weapon, you know, like it's coming on and going off the watch. So if you ever have a fear of uh, weapons, just know that yes, these are real weapons, but they've, there's no way that any bullet's going to go through that anytime soon. Um, yeah, it's it's completely, uh, well, I don't know what the word, you could call it de-armed. I don't know. I can't remember. There's a specific word, so it's so sorry. But anyway, there's, yeah, it's uh, it's set up so that you can just train and you can get comfortable with the web before you go to the actual firing range. This is very important. You have to understand that. When an enemy is on a ship or near four by, you have to know how to use these weapons. You understand that? Yes, they are, sir. What's going on, Wu? Um, I failed the swim test today. Okay. And I don't know what, what they what, what they, they were saying. saying. Okay, so okay. you were swimming on your face instead of trying to float on your back. Yeah, okay. I was trying to swim because I know I can swim. Okay. Okay. So you got off the off the bridge. That's the hardest part. Getting yeah. that jump. Most people don't even. Most jump. people don't want to do that. So. If you can get into oh, that happens every day. Um, we'll have 
especially now that we've turned up the heat, we started being a little bit more intense out there on the on the deck, and uh, so we're probably going to see that at least once a day for the next couple of days or a couple of weeks. Let's go! Hurry up! We're at the pool picking up uh, my recruits. Uh, so normally that whole room there will get like covered by like two divisions. That's why you only see them on one side. 900s don't have brother divs or anything. They usually don't have brother divs. But in this case, obviously they did not. So that'll be filled by two divisions. And this is pretty early. This is like week one of training that you usually get the, you know, week one of like uh, after P days that you do the swim. Um, they just finished their initial swim qualification. So um, we're gonna get them ready, uh, get them out on the grinder and march them back to the ship. Stand at attention, hands closed. I think some of the misconceptions that recruits have about RDCs is that, that they're here just to be, be mean to them. Uh, and that's not really the case at all. They're, we're here to, hold to expectations. mold them into, into sailors. Mold and sailors hold expectations, yeah. And we use yelling as a way to increase the anxiety. So if I can, you know, put you in a strenuous environment, but you still succeed, then you'll be ready for more in the fleet. It's, you know, it's uh, mental training. Hey, go. Talk, speak, speak. Who thinks they did bad? This is Freedom Hall. This is where we do a lot of PT. Why do you think you did bad? <coughs> what? You didn't, you didn't push hard enough? What's that? You kept telling yourself to give up. What did I tell you in the beginning? Don't give up, right? Tell yourself you can do it, right? What happens when you're on that ship? You've been awake for 24 hours and you want to quit, right? But somebody comes and attacks the ship. What are you going to do? Are you going to quit? No, Chief! Are you going to quit? No, Chief! Are you going to quit? No, Chief! Better not. When the time comes, you need to put out, you need to fight. You need to fight through that pain. We don't quit, ever. One team, one fight! Sweet, one team, one fight! One team, one fight! So we know we're out there PTing. That's a, okay. So I'm, I don't know if they did this or asked him to do this because they're recording and stuff but there are some people i don't remember if he was or not that love giving recruits speeches and there's a time and place for that sometimes you need to sometimes you need to wrap things up some things you need to like get the group together and to have a little motivation talk ite isn't always the answer you know sometimes you just need to have that talk and back to reality let them know what's going on and there i had one partner who really loved doing speeches and they would go and i'd just be looking at my watch and i'd be like oh man we, we gotta go man like what, what are we doing here you know uh I, i'm trying not to be late to things uh, but yeah they loved giving speeches especially they these recruits get in their own heads and they say oh i, I just want to quit i don't i don't want to do this anymore i don't want to i don't want to run it hurts and sometimes you just gotta gotta yell, yell, yell to get them motivated, and then at the end, sit them down and, and explain why why you're yelling, why you're out there motivating them. To or just run with them. Better. Sometimes even that's good them, enough. You want to see them succeed. We're not here to see people fail. We're here to see people succeed. Yeah. So a lot of them, it takes a minute for them to understand that it's not about me. It's about the 88 other recruits that are next to me, and it's about everybody else besides me. But I tell my recruits, if you don't quit on us, we won't quit on you. But you got to come in and give us 100% every day. Yep. Whatever it is we're training, whatever it is we're doing, just know we're doing it for a reason, not just to tell you to do it. So I found a recruit here. She has a headband around her arm. This is in accordance with regulations, especially after this recruit just took test one. So I'm about to give her some um, IT motivational tool so she knows not to do this okay. again. You know what? You know why? I'm about to give you some motivation. Why? After you just took test one twice, your failure, we went over this, you do not wear it unless it is a wet. Religious wet. So you knew that. Right, so he's talking about the uniform code regulations. Uh, uh, you can find them on AVHR. And at the time, there was three tests that you took. I think it's down to two now. They change it all the time. But either way, 
you get a recruit training manual or training guide and uni- basic un- military knowledge is usually the first things they go over, like uniform regs, hair and stuff like that. And, you know, you're told, hey, don't do these things. And then you're tested on it kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's what he's saying right there is that she just took a test and that probably on that test was uniform regulation and it was on there for her not to do it. So he's he's calling her out saying, hey, you knew better kind of a thing. Not, oops, you made an honest mistake. You didn't know. Here's a training this this should be a training moment, you know? Every moment should be a training moment, but this was a, oh, no, let's motivate you to remind you to not do that again. This is wrong. So I'm strict on my recruits um, because I don't want them to lose military band. One, two, three. One. Move fast. One, two, three. Two. One, yeah, two, three. Let's go. Down. Up. Down. Up. Get your body alive. So, oh, whoops. <laughs> what a great place to pause it. Um, but yeah, uh, you can see that she had like poor form. And yeah, this happens. A male or female, after like a few exercises, their form just goes out the window, especially to like, did you do this after PT and stuff like that? That happens. But the important part is uh, sometimes it's just about making them go through it. And it's all just a mind game. Like even if they're doing it like, at all, and then in their head, they're beating themselves up more than you are as an RDC, I assure you. It's not that hard. Um, and it's funny too, because people beat themselves up and it's PT. You know, you're working out. Some people pay for this stuff to get yelled at and do this. There's, like, boot camps for at gyms and stuff. Um, we just make it personal. I'm in straight. The wide of his eyes. One. You touch the dick again, you will feel IT. I will document your heart card. You okay. understand that? Go down! Well, that's the thing, too. Yeah, if, um, I mean, it was. If you had an ITE session and you failed to do all the exercises properly that you were given, uh, there was a certain amount. If you filled a certain amount, then you would just document it on your IT card, and that would be like you know one of those things we could use against you in a sense of like uh, if you continuously are failing, kind of a thing. You know, more like you're sticking out. The you know the Japanese proverb, the nail that sticks out gets hammered. So obviously, if you were just straight up acting out, then this is gonna mess you up. If you're just someone that made a mistake, then we need to encourage you to work a little harder or pay attention or buddy you up with someone that can help you. Then this won't hurt you at all. Don't worry about it. Oh. Get your hips straight. Last one in about body alignment. You will feel alone due to body alignment. Down. Feet show with the part. Don't stop. You know, if I would have not have caught in this, and if you'd have got caught walking out on the streets of FQA would have came in here, the division would have got a demerit chip because of you. So you're not a team player. I apologize for you. You hear in the background, someone is getting it would as well. But yeah, um, you know, it's, it's not you, the only, you're not the only person that's going to be affected by this now. You know, the rest of the division is going to be affected. It hurts the division when you mess up, not just you. So your actions no longer are your own. Uh, so you got to look out. That's what they mean by one team, one fight. It's, you understand, uh, you're, you could be hurting others in the process. Uh, but arm circles are the best. I used to make them do them all the time just because, you know, it strengthens your shoulders and that's good for push ups and stuff. And, you know, I always feel like people could, you know, have nicer shoulders too. Plus, I have a shoulder injury, so I like doing that because the stronger my shoulder gets, the less the injury hurts. But I just feel like that's a lot of people's weak points anyway, and it's, it's a good exercise to do. You're just holding your arms up. It's... The team needs each other to graduate. People make mistakes. Hi, Pastor. Today, you made one of those mistakes. Yes, Pastor. From here on out, this should be a training, a training opportunity for you. Yes, to explain to anybody, regardless of gender, this is not authorized. Hi, okay. Yeah, share the knowledge. We're hey, here. I made this mistake. We don't make my mistakes. mistakes. Yes, Pastor. This is a stupid uh, mistake. Yes, Pastor. I agree, Pastor. And it should never happen again. Hi, Pastor. I don't want it to happen again. I don't either, Pastor. And then they're like family towards the end because uh, you build a bond. You got them for eight weeks, eight to nine weeks. So you can't t- possibly any RDC on this base can tell me over this amount of time that these recruits become family to you. Because they got your bad just like you got theirs. Let's go. So coming here oh, yeah. too. Yeah, there's that buy-in, you know, like definitely like near the end, with the exception of like maybe one or two uh, divisions. Uh, there would be times that I swear, if I was like standing over a body with the knife in my hand and cops came in, they'd be like, "Did he do it?" And they'd be like, "Nope, that dude fell." <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's the buy-in, but that's the thing. As an RDC, don't waste that buy-in. Some people you like to do that by making them do dumb stuff and like games. It's like, what are you doing? They're still a human being. They're still an adult. They're still coming through here. Why would you do that embarrassing stuff just because you have that buy-in? Because it's cool to do that. No, use that buy-in to get them motivated to get more training to do the right thing, to encourage each other, to have them encourage you. 
that's what you do with that buy-in and it feeds back it's it's the reward at the end it really is don't waste that buy-in rtc you you think that you're you're just going to push non-stop so you're going to be here uh 16 18 hours a day for three years and that that's really not the case you're nope. here uh, you do a push get a, at least a week off and then um, before you go back on to another push and then uh, after you've done a year of pushing, you'll get I always wanted one of those. So there's like someone that knew someone that made these things. And I always wanted one of those. I never got them. There's also like a wooden placard one you can get. But that one was cool. A year of uh, recruit training period. So that's where you're going to do just random. Oh, so I interrupted him, but he was saying you push for a year. So you have a year where you're responsible for training recruits. With a, it, it, Between each division that you train, you get a week or two off. Sometimes a month. It really depends on the like. You know, what, what's the season? If it's summer, you get a lot more than you do in the winter, so you'll probably have more time off. And uh, that's where most of the recruits come in. It's just because, you know, they're out of school, they're graduating, so they send them out through the summer. And then, uh, yeah, you get a, a year of that, and then you do another year uh, where you just, you it's called re recruit training period or whole job is what we used to call it. And, you know, you work at steps, you could work at uh, night arrivals, you can work at medical, you can work at firefighting. It's, you're not being an RDC on push anymore. You're more so just supporting the train evolution of everything that's going on, but not being on push. So good at hours, better hours of being an RDC. Um, and then you go back to a year of pushing again. So that's your three-year tour. That three-year tour doesn't start uh, until after you graduate. So don't forget, you also have 13 weeks of RDC school, another three weeks of in, uh, naval instructor training. Um, Naval Instructor Training Center, NITSI, yeah. So uh, all that starts, your three-year tour starts once you put the red rope on. Jobs throughout the base to help train the recruits, but you're not actively on push. So you're getting that family time. And then the last year that you're here, you're, you're going back on push and training. So they're going to show the nice one, right? They're about to show uh, STG1. I knew her as well. Um, FQA. So FQA, right? They're the cops, the police. They're the ones that go around and give you demerit chits. They grade your division and stuff like that. And they're, you know, making sure the recruits know what they're doing. And then they're also holding the RDCs accountable to make sure they're training them right. So, you know, it's a good job. But, oh, it is rough. And, you you know, I mean, you might as well be an RDC still. And uh, they try to get me to do it. I said, no, thank you. I'm good. I would like to actually enjoy my recruit training period or my whole job. Uh, it was very nice of them to offer. I knew what they were doing. It was a very, um, I was honored that they, the, a lot of people suggested and try to push me to go do it. But uh, no, I just wasn't having it. But you know, kudos to them for doing it. Your last couple, few divisions. I'm Petty Officer Keegan Dyer. I'm a recruit division commander at Recruit Training Command. So right now I am on what we call RTP, it's which tough. is Recruit Training Period. It's the See, she's got one too. I always wanted one. I just, I don't know why. I mean, someone FQA definitely had the hookup. I just never went around to actually getting it. But I would have loved one of those. That would have been cool. But um, yeah, tough being an FQA. Real tough. The year in between your two uh, push periods, I currently work at Fleet Quality Assurance or FQA. We go out and we assess the recruits. We do personnel inspections. We do drill inspections. We go into compartments for compartment readiness. Yeah, they're doing inspections all day, every day, and they're always checking. And on top of that, what stinks is, um, you know, they talk about, they are, people argue with FQA. You know, they're the ones that are giving scores, and some RDCs are like, no, get my recruits a better score. I want a better score. I want a score. And in reality, if you did the thing wrong or the recruit didn't perform, then they didn't perform. You should train them better. And, you know, something happens and it's not the end of the world. But it would it'd be tough if you because then you get phone calls like, why did you give my division this? And it's like, oh, dude. I mean, you earned it, man. What do you want? You know, so it could be tough being FQA in that as well. It's, it's a rigorous job. And then you get, you know, people just call you and complain to you all the time that you hit them on the thing. And they're just doing their job. It's their job to do that. Work harder. Be a better RDC. Quality assurance. Basically, everybody calls us the police. They try yep. to avoid us the best they can. Yeah. They don't normally like to see us walk in when we have the briefcase. Hey, what are you no, but if you're good at your job, and I would work really hard to be like, hey, invite them in and waste their time. Make them look and make sure they find nothing. So doing the right thing, you know, everything's where it's supposed to be. So they know that when they came in here, they wasted their time because there's nothing to find because we're doing the right thing. You know, that would be, I'd always tell them, make sure you're wasting FQA's time. Do everything right. They have someone else to go find. Why are you running in a row? Why are you not on a sidewalk? Yeah, you who's staring at me in the middle of the parking lot. What yeah. are you doing? It's so funny. Recruits always like stare at you like me, the person doing the obviously thing wrong. Why are you in wrong. the middle of the street? 
Get over here now. That guy right there, he's totally just like, oh, please just don't yell at me. Why would you walk into a parking lot? When do you ever walk in a parking lot as a recruit? When there's a part, there's a sidewalk right in front of you. Does that make any sense? No, Petty Officer. We assess the recruits' ability to do something, but we're also keeping an eye on the RDCs that they're training, how they're supposed to. Yep. Paul, we are about to do a phase three drill inspections for two divisions. Phase three, so that's written for FAP, okay. Anything above a 4.5 is good at this point. There's so many checkpoints when it comes to drill. I was part of a ship's training team. Um, it's so you can like, you get good enough to do inspections on other divisions that are not yours. And what you do, it's more so like an outside party looking in. Uh, it's a qualification. So you have to know what you're doing. You have to be good at it and you have to be recommended for it. You're not FQA, you're not giving scores, but you're, you know, you're grading like FQA. And the whole idea is you're trying to find what the, those divisions RDCs can't see. So you help them train any deficiencies and, you know, help them score better. And this was like, man, that page has so many hits that you can have. And it's, you know, when you do an inspection, you know, like a uniform inspection, you just, you go to the recruit, you inspect their uniform, you ask them a question, you move on. That's it. And then, you know, make sure they did all the movements they need for the personnel inspection, like marching out and, you know, about face and saluting. You just make sure you follow the steps. It's really, really, really simple. Uh, and it can take some time depending on the size of the vision. But this is like, there's no repeat. They're just going and they're going on with the tape. There's no like, hey, stop, go back and do that again. That's not how inspections work. So, yeah, it's, you know, whenever I had to do these gradings, um, I would I would just stress out just because there's so many checkpoints. And it, there's so many things happening. It would... You want when you train drill and when it's this part of the drill, you want to make sure you have all your partners with you because there's so many checkpoints and you're getting 80 recruits, 90 recruits. You got to make sure they're all doing the right thing. You know, they might, you know, it's tough and grading this is tough as well. I've seen a lot of people get upset about the scores they get on this. They obviously did something wrong. That's the, what are you doing this? Chief, you ready? That's never a good noise. Every oh, the way she said that. They did not, they probably got too many unsats. Every score, every hit or unsat is a point one off their score. So they took five unsats, so they got a 4.5. So it's not a training deficiency. That's not bad. Four point, like I said, 4.5. You get a 4.5 or higher on, this is their, this is their first inspection. Uh, Cause you get three drill inspections. So one's like marching outside. So you get to be able to do that unsupervised. The second one, and the third one are both in this drill hall or the Atlantic Fleet drill hall, and it's to prepare for graduation. So you go through all the moves and stuff like that. So the better you look for this, the better you'll look at graduation. And uh, four point five is pretty good for the first time around. It's really not. It's not the greatest score, obviously, but it's it's still a good score. That's like okay, cool. It's getting improved, and you know, figure out the deficiencies of what they did. Um, yeah, that's not a training deficiency. That's just you know, they might still be nervous. They might have not trained it as much as they would like. You know, everyone gets that at a different time. Four point five is pretty good. It's not great, it's not bad, it's pretty good. See, it's just recruits doing mis making mistakes, which everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. So instead of getting a training deficiencies for the RDCs, it's just an unsat for their So training deficiencies, that's if you train them and make them do the wrong thing. So if they just completely like, if you told them, if they're supposed to all raise their left hand and jump up and down, and instead they lie down on the ground, I'm making stuff up, right? But if they just do the completely wrong thing, or 100% of them don't know how to do it, that's a training deficiency. I think it was like 50% or more of the recruits doing the wrong thing. So if it was like, uh, for example, you could do, there's inspections for your, when you uh, trice up the rack and you go make sure everything's folded and stowed right. And you see over 50% of the recruits, when you do the inspection, stowed their skivvies wrong. They're just completely upside down or something like that. Uh, that's a training deficiency. You train them the wrong way. They, this too many of them fail. That's a TD. Uh, is what you call them. TD, training deficiency, uh, RDCI, RDC infraction, and then PD, which is a professional deficiency. And that's like we're putting the recruits health at risk. Um, so yeah, that's not a TD, a 4.5 because they probably just got, you know, it's a pass fail. There's a lot of checkpoints. And if they hit the checkpoint, they're good. If they didn't hit that checkpoint, it's a fail. No way they're having a 4.5 plus a TD. That's insane. Inspection. So with that being said, you took five months out of the score of 4.5. Chief, any questions? Nope.
I bet she's still yeah, gonna hydrate. Hydrate, go. Yeah. Go. I'm not asking nobody walking. You will hydrate. You will hydrate. You will hydrate. So I said it was a decent, pretty good score, right? 4.5, but he's still at teeing him, and they still have another drill score they can get. Why is he doing that? Uh, he may have, I don't know, maybe he the things they got hit on were the things he said, you guys, are, you're doing this, that's going to be a hit, stop doing it, and they did it, kind of a thing. So, Or maybe he just wants to know that, huh, that's pretty good, is not good enough, you know? Don't be happy with an 80, get a 90, get a 100, aim for a 100, you know? Aim for 110, and maybe, what do they say? Uh, shoot from the moon, if you miss, you'll land amongst the stars. Whatever. Um that's the whole idea. I mean, you know, I don't know the background. I don't know what he trained him on, but you know, it's whatever. One, two, three, four, six, good enough is not good enough, you know. Two, three. Why are you here? To go to war, G. Why are you here? To go to war, G. How are you supposed to win the war? Discipline Well, you guys lack discipline today. You absolutely lack discipline. And this is why you failed. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, on your feet. Making mistakes, well you're not supposed to make mistakes, it's how people get killed. Six weeks of boot camp, you're getting complacent. You still got two more weeks until battle stations. How are you gonna make it if you're complacent already? If you wanna graduate, you have to do it as a team. All these assessments require teamwork. When I came to boot camp, it was, I'm gonna do four years, I'm gonna get my GI Bill, I'm gonna go to college, I'm gonna get out. Then I came to boot camp. My third RDC at the time was CTR1 Bullock. She is now senior chief. So she set like a really good, okay, solid bye. foundation of my naval career and I wanted to give that back. Three, four, here we go, we're gonna try something new. C-130 rolling down the strip. C-130 rolling down the strip. Division two, three, two is gonna take a little. Oh, he messed that one up and then they put it in, no. This is actually a running cadence. I mean, if you slow it down, sure it's March cadence, but uh, ugh. Man, they put that on camera, man. They made you look bad. This, uh. That's not how you say that. Trip. Division two, three, two is gonna take a little trip. It's probably out of step now. You don't be like, oh, okay, hey, here's your rope. Go out there and train these recruits. It doesn't work that way. Out in the fleet, you'll often hear people talk about recruit training command or RDC duty being arduous, which it is arduous. It's hard. Uh, however, you also hear that you know you don't get time off. You're eight weeks straight, seven days a week, no time off whatsoever where you're pretty much just sleeping here at the barracks, which none of that is true. No, but it's still seven days a week. It is still seven days a week it, while you're on push. It's seven days a week. It's tough. But there's something about, like I said, if you have good partners, they're there with you. There's something about that that just makes it so much easier. And you have three partners that nobody ever- Three partners? You have two. Would you have four man push? That's unfair, Chief. Ever wants to talk about it. They think that you're pushing one division by yourself without any help. So the biggest myth was absolutely the stress cards. We always used to hear about stress cards, that recruits got stress cards and they could just pull them out of their pocket. Yeah, there's no stress cards. They got to be excused from any evolution that they were doing. I've heard some misconceptions about boot camp. They say that um, it's not rewarding or the atmosphere just isn't good here at Recruit Training Command, but that wasn't the case at all. Uh, one of the rumors that... It can be bad. It can be bad. And any command, the atmosphere can be bad. You got to understand, sometimes, you know, for me, there's two navies. There's the big navy, you know, the one that makes all the rules and regulations, and they sign our paychecks. And then there's your navy, and that's your immediate chain of command of the people around you. You can't control the big navy, but you can control the immediate uh, the navy that's around you, you know, by being positive, but making sure you're doing your job and reporting right. If you're in charge, make sure you're taking care of your sailors. And, you know, so that can create this, cre this bubble of where there is positivity. I know that sounds really dumb. I'm saying, oh, we'll talk about positive. But seriously, it really is that simple because I will talk to someone 
who was on the same ship as me, but they worked in a different department. And they're like, oh, screw the Navy, man. It sucks. And, you know, it was terrible. And I was like, and I found out they just had a really, really bad chief and Devo and first class as well. You know, it was just a bad immediate triad, which it sucks to hear those things where I am sitting here and having a good time and they're having a bad time, you know? And um, so, yeah, there's good and bads. And, and the possibility of the entire command being toxic is very low. So it's probably just your immediate and make sure you're hanging out with the right people, you know? And, um, I mean, it is so rewarding. There's something about, you know, you just have you know, 100 recruits come in, 100 civilians come in, messed up haircut, you know, not proper haircuts, such as a civilian clothes. And then, you know, 10 weeks, 8 to 10 weeks later, they're making that left turn in their dress uniform, and it feels so good, man, because you know you were a part of that. And you're just proud that, that you could be part of that process. And, you know, they thank you afterwards as well, too. It's, it's cool. It's really cool. It is rewarding. More so than uh, sometimes the fleet, you know, you don't really get rewards uh, like that as often, you know, that's every 10 weeks you get a big win. I actually heard when I got up here was right before I started C school, that C school was a mini boot camp, well not a mini boot camp, actually a longer boot camp because it's 13 weeks. I was terrified that, does that mean I had to sleep in a compartment? Like, do I not get to go home at night? Um, and then they said the same thing about when you're on push, like that you would sleep in the ships. So. That was obviously untrue. We got so yeah, right. Uh, it is. I would say it is still like a mini boot camp when you go through RDCC school. And the thing is, you're gonna get treated kind of like how the recruits get treated. You know, you can get ITE when you go into RDCC school, whether you're second class, first class, chief, senior chief. You're going through RDCC school. You actually had to get the full card to even be qualified to even hold the card and utilize it. So yeah, it can be kind of like boot camp in a sense of that. But um, no, you're not staying there overnight. Uh, if you do end up having a really long work day and you feel don't feel safe driving home, there are like rooms that you can sleep in. Uh, they'll offer it to you for safety, but no, you don't stay there. You go home. You know, yeah, uh, that's not a thing. People don't really do that. You know, they they go. Everyone goes home. To go home every night and sleep, unless you have your mid watch. Of course, you have to stay. In your yeah, room. unless you had a mid watch, right? You don't get to go home at night unless you had a you know the mid watch. Mid watches. These hours are long, but I think that a lot of the times they go by faster than you would imagine because of how busy you are with the recruits. I think coming here, the hours are worth it because there's always that one recruit that you find in P-Days that you never think they're gonna make it through. And then one day it clicks for them. And that's that to me is when all the hard work is worth it. Uh, you don't get to do all the fun things that you would typically do on a normal shore duty. Um, but the reward in the end. Fun things like having normal working hours. And, and the leadership experience and the, the people experience that you get, you'll never get at any other command here. And it makes you far off better. Yeah, I, um, I met like a lot of my mentors there. I never had a mentor in the Navy. Uh, or ever really, I guess. Um, and then I went here and then um, luckily some senior people saw some potential in me. And they took me under the wing, and I'm so thankful for this. You do actually meet a whole lot of people, and you get a lot of good experiences. But that's going to wrap up this video. So let me know what you guys think of this. I actually just put, like, two O's here. <laughs> uh, but you can, like, design the face. So let me know what you think the face should be designed as. Other than that, hoo-yah, Navy.